Okay, so I'm going to do another project here. I, um, while I'm waiting for Kim's neck to dry, uh, I bound the sides on this one the other day. Uh, this is my son Miles' guitar. So, um, yeah, I'll start pulling all this off. So this is not exactly riveting, pulling off tape off of a guitar. So let's talk about pursuing your passion and what that looks like for each person. I think for everybody, it's obviously different, right? I mean, what is your passion, first of all? Um, I can only speak from just my experience of what I've done. Uh, am I living the dream? <laughs> Not exactly. It looks different than I thought it was going to look. Um, building guitars doesn't uh, support my family fully. So I end up having to do some concrete still in the summertime, a little bit in the wintertime, a little bit of renos. But uh, for the most part, and actually mind the diversity and the, uh, you know, just to kind of change things up a little bit. Sometimes I'll go out on the drag line for a day. Um, sometimes I'll come in and build some ashtrays or whatever it is. And that's, that has worked well for me. Uh, that's a different way of thinking for a lot of people. Um, I think... Uh, you know, if you start to think that way, that, uh, I don't know, maybe we weren't really created to just do one job. Some people that works, right? Some, some people are the kind of people that, and it, it's, there's no right or wrong in it, but some, some people have to have a steady job and a steady paycheck and uh, know where their money's coming, you know, every two weeks. Um, work at and work at the same job for 20 30 years of their career and that's completely fine there's nothing wrong with that whatsoever if you're that kind of a person but if you're not that kind of a person like most of my family and that kills me <laughs> to be able to uh that the thought of going to a regular job working for somebody um and just being at the same career, doing the same thing, day in, day out, uh, that just doesn't work for me, first of all. So over the last, oh, I don't know, five or six years, I guess, um, I started just kind of taking on whatever came at me, whatever kind of jobs came at me, um, I just, if I thought I could do it or I could learn it, I just wouldn't turn it down. So pretty much anything in construction, renos, whatever else, I built bars, uh, you know, a couple commercial kitchen jobs, I built houses in the past. Uh, we had our own house building company called Crystal Mountain Homes just for a short time where I partnered with a friend. And that was kind of my lifelong dream since I was about 15 or 16 when I got into construction was my plan was to become a builder one day and build some high-end houses and when I got there I guess my dream changed uh, it wasn't exactly what I wanted to do it wasn't bad maybe part of it was I felt fulfilled in that area and felt like, hey, I, I built some houses. Uh, and I built several other houses in the past, like for ourselves and with my father-in-law. Um, from start to finish, from, you know, the foundation up, the framing, building cabinets, laying the floor, roofing, siding. I mean, we've, we've pretty much done a fair bit of the house. Uh, he was an electrician by trade and cabinet maker, so uh, yeah, we did it all the electrical, everything. And of course I did all the concrete. Um, yeah, so my, my dreams changed. I mean, probably since the time I was about 15, when I started picking, playing guitar, um, I 
pretty much wanted to know how to build these things almost right away. Now that took me, this is before internet was around, so um, that took me till I was nearly 20, about 26, I guess, 27, before I met a young fella that uh, had bought some tools set up in his mom's garage. This is in Kelowna, BC. Um, he was building some guitar bodies like I did Kim's bass there. And uh, he said, hey, come on out, use my tools. I'll show you what I know and we'll just kind of learn together. So started down that road. I've uh, tried many different avenues. And if I was being honest with myself, all the different job avenues that I've tried, most of them uh, were to have a job that would free me up some more time so that I could build guitars on the side. <laughs> so once I kind of figured that out, um, then I realized, hey, why don't I just actually just pursue building guitars in some aspect? And, uh, and so that's what led me to, you know, opening a shop a few years ago. Um, from when I was uh, 34, I uh, trained and tried for the uh, Edmonton um, Fire Department, City Fire Department. And the uh, first time I tried, I had just put my application in and I uh, ended up getting cancer for the first time. So I was 34, had testicular cancer. Um, just went through radiation operation, kind of all that. I've been clean for whatever, 15, 16 years now. Um, and so that was kind of a shot. The whole idea of the fire department was again, thinking that, you know, hey, firemen, you know, work for four or five days and then some, some, everyone's a little different, but you get maybe four or five days off, you know, four on, four off, something like that. Or, and I thought when I have those days off in the summertime, I could do a bit of concrete. In the wintertime, I could just build guitars and I have a steady paycheck coming in. Seemed like a good plan. Uh, my friends encouraged me, a whole bunch of firefighter friends that I had that I was pouring concrete for, <laughs> ironically, uh, encouraged me to try again. And so two years later, I started training again and I tried again for the fire department and I got cancer the second time. Um, same kind of cancer I ended up with, uh, it had traveled up to my neck, I guess, uh, when I had radiation the first time, two years before. And it just was kind of laying there in remission, I guess. And it came out as uh, two golf ball sized tumors down in my, my collarbone. So then I went through uh, three months of pretty intense radiation uh, that I had to work through most of it being self-employed. Um, but uh, yeah, came out the other end of that and I figured, uh, man, if I keep trying for the fire department, uh, apparently I'm going down a bad road that I'm not supposed to go down. And uh, so I, I gave up on that dream. Now many years forward, I don't really think I ever had a passion to ever become a firefighter per se. It just was a means to get me here, building guitars. So sometimes I think pursuing our passion involves us being uh, pretty honest with ourselves with what it is that you actually want to do. Um, what is it you're good at? I mean. Someone like Colonel Sanders, when I read his story, he was a guy that worked all of his life, retired at 65, and after 65, after living off of his measly pension, he decided, uh, man, this, this is not enough to live on. This is not working for me. And he happened to be really good at cooking chicken. 
just was his thing. Sometimes it's that simple. And so uh, he started from, from as far as the story I've read, he started cooking chicken and uh, selling it around the neighborhood. And then it started getting bigger and bigger until he sold, you know, so much of it that he ended up opening up a store and opened up the, sir, the first uh, KFC. Now, KFC over a number of years, Colonel Sanders became a multi-billionaire as far as I understand, after the age of 65 when he decided the pension wasn't working for him. And that was all based off of he could cook good chicken. <laughs> That's pretty crazy. Um, so for me, I know how to make stuff. Um, that's why uh, someone, when I met Josh from My Hands Gallery in Ushitat, uh, Josh and I kind of got along right away because we were very living a very similar lifestyles and we're guys that just make stuff. Don't care what it is. I love building guitars, but I also love making just about anything. Um, from, from a very, very early age, you know, I remember my brother and I uh, living at a, uh, my mom cooked at a lot of camps when we were younger and we lived at a uh, forestry camp when I was about maybe five, six. And the guys would be, so back in the 70s, so the guys would be packing around the old ham radios like you'd see uh, the military guys carry. And my brother and I thought that was so cool, so we went and grabbed a chunk of old railroad tie that was about the same size and we nailed a rope to it and a little piece of something on it, it looked like an antenna and we walked around with our little walkie-talkie on it and pretended it was our ham radio. Um, that's kind of one of the first things I recall making back at that age that I had a gift to be able to look at something and make my version of it. And that's just always been there. So that's basically what I do now, is I, uh, you know, I, I get ideas for things, uh, whatever it is, and I am able to just make it, whatever it is. Um, I feel pretty blessed to have a gift like that. And the more I do it, the more fulfilled I feel more happy I feel. Um, am I making amazing money at it? Mm, not yet. <laughs> uh, that's not going to stop me and I'm certainly not going to let the uh, Get Rich program dictate uh, what I'm going to do for a job as far as, you know, I spent I spent years doing that in concrete. Um, we built up a, you know, a big concrete crew where we had 10 guys working for us and trucks and trailers and Bobcat and we were doing residential and commercial and building houses on the side. And I was just, you know, just a going concern, just on, on route to become a millionaire of some sort. <laughs> and uh, one day I just kind of, well, we just kind of snapped and I was like, I don't, I don't want to do this anymore. I'm not enjoying this. It's not what I want to do. And I'd given up building guitars for, oh, I don't know, probably 10 years, I betcha, um, where I don't think I built one. There was a few people that, you know, I knew friends and stuff from around my area that, you know, they'd seen pictures of stuff I'd built before and they knew that I used to, but, um, you know, most of them didn't really know that side of me, the guy that built the cars. And um, so now that I'm kind of back at it and, you know, building electrics for many years, bases predominantly, um, my dad came before Christmas time here and uh, shared his acoustic guitar building abilities with me. Now, Building guitars or Lee 3, 
I wouldn't say has been a family trade by any means. Um, my, uh, my dad and I both learned how to build guitars separately in two separate cities. And uh, his passion was acoustics and mine was electric basses mostly. And I built mostly uh, six strings probably, I guess, six string basses. And it wasn't until he came here, spent a few weeks with me, um, and taught me how to build acoustic guitars that all of a sudden I was like, wow, that's, that's it. I love, my, my goal always was to uh, get to building um, carp talk jazz guitars one day. And so as soon as I built the first box for an acoustic here, um, I felt like I'm one step closer and I, I made them kind of a flat top jazz guitar, not a carp top yet, but those are in my nearby future. And closer I get to that, the more I feel like, man, this is what I was created to do. I love jazz guitars, have always. And so, um, I'll continue pursuing that. Now, does that mean if I'm still having to do a little bit of concrete on the side or do something else, does that mean I'm a failure? No, not at all. Some people that's going to work for, they might get there and I might get there. I don't know. I don't know what that's going to look like. I have no idea. And I'm pretty open to seeing, uh, just where life takes me. Um, I don't really have any uh, aspirations to have a great big manufacturing company manufacturing instruments. Uh, my dream would be to have uh, uh, one day a shop on an acreage with, with my own house. Um, of course, this shop is on my friend's, uh, Drew and Julia's property. And I'm very blessed to have this shop. It's about 15 minutes from my house. But uh, being an artist and, uh, and luthier and whatnot, uh, you don't get to turn off ideas. You can't shut creativity down. So uh, once you kind of in start entertaining it, then it comes on full force. And there's lots and lots of sleepless nights for artists where, uh, you know, if I had my shop at home, I'd be out there in the middle of the night building stuff. That's just, that's just how I am. Um, I know guys like uh, Josh from Nushitat is the same. He does a lot of his painting at, you know, all nights of the, or all hours of the night. Um, and then does, you know, his renos and stuff during the day. So, you know, find out what your, what your thing is and maybe, you know, maybe be open to not just doing one thing. You know, are there some, are there several things that you're good at that you think you might be able to make a bit of money at? And you put them all together and that creates a living for you. And for me, a fairly interesting living because, and I have had in the course of two days, I've had in the past where one morning I was helping a builder friend of mine do some crown molds on one of his houses. And in the afternoon, uh, I got a call to go do a, gra a drag line job with my friends, the Harringtons. And the next day, the next morning, um, I had a concrete driveway I had to pour. And then the next day, my brother called me, and he's a heavy-duty mechanic, and I go out a couple times a year down to the auction uh, yard with him and help him take apart, you know, one or two excavators usually, uh, so they can fit onto a trailer and be shipped down to another city. So that's four super, super different occupations that have nothing to do with each other whatsoever. 
and uh, and that was just my <laughs> my work life in a two day period. Other days I'll have where you know I poured some concrete in the morning and then I back to the shop when I have some free time in the afternoon and work on some guitars or whatever it might be. Um, so, you know, I have a, a number of friends that have different passions. What, one of my buddies, uh, him and I started brewing beer together years ago. And um, neither of us had ever done that before. It was just kind of a, uh, yeah, I want to brew beers one day. So we tried it. He kind of immediately took the reins and uh, was customizing stuff and we didn't follow no beer making protocol from a kit or anything like that. And um, within, I think I brewed with them for about a year, maybe two years, I guess. And then I was like, okay, that was cool. I did that, not a huge passion of mine. I enjoyed it, it was fun, had some good beer. But uh, my friend discovered a major, major passion for himself. And now today, uh, several years later, he has a full pub in his basement with four beer on tap, uh, a very serious microbrewery in his garage where he brews all of his beer, has won awards, uh, has been the head of the, you know, amateur kind of like the brewers guild or whatever for our area for the whole Edmonton area uh, if he wanted to brew professionally and open up a pub or uh, just a brewery or whatever I'm he certainly could um, that's not really his passion his passion is just making beer for his friends so we get to enjoy going over to his place to his pub and drinking his beer um, so he didn't even know that he even liked that. that. That wasn't even on his radar his whole life until he was in his 40s. Um, a couple of years ago, uh, after being close friends for 18 years, it never came up in conversation that, uh, that he used to play guitar. <laughs> I knew that he played trumpet once upon a time in school. Um, and so, you know, me building guitars and playing and whatever it's just funny that it never came up and uh and so he brought it up and i was like man you're gonna start playing again so i sent him home with an acoustic guitar well fast forward like two years later or maybe three years something like that uh i built him an electric guitar that he bought off me um he owns several others He's been taking lessons weekly for two and a half years straight now. And his playing went from, you know, play a couple chords to, he was on a, a cruise a little while ago and got up and played on, uh, in a blues jam with a bunch of guys. Again, a passion he didn't even know he even had until he was in his, that one, his mid fifties. So all that to be said, it's never too late. You're not too old. Um, you know, maybe you're ending your career. Maybe you're in the middle of your career. Uh, see what happens. Step out. You know, is it is it a painful change? Yeah. Yeah, it's tough. That's why most people don't do it. Um, it's it's not easy pursuing your passion, but sometimes it's just being open. Um, to what comes up in front of you and just being able to make money in multiple different ways. Um, part of my biggest downfall pursuing my passion is that I have so many interests that even building just one kind of guitar just doesn't fulfill my, my, my needs or whatever, I guess, right? So I have maybe 13 different bass models four guitar models and I quickly on to about six different acoustic and jazz guitar models. Um, I like the variety. 
if I'd stuck to one, like say just Kim's bass and I just mass produced those, uh, could I be in a different position today and be selling those uh, regularly? Probably. But uh, sometimes um, doing so much of just your, your passion that you thought was your, your main passion, doing it so much, uh, you might actually end up getting bored of that. And so for me, I need to do multiple different things. And that, that just works for me. So, um, yeah, I don't know if that helps you. Um, I hope that inspires or encourages some of you to, uh, you know, follow, follow your patch, passions. Uh, maybe start thinking about even what your passion is. Or maybe your job you're in, you're already just quite content and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. So, thanks for watching and listening to me babble. There's the binding. Now i got to do some scraping on that thing. And uh, start Miles's neck. Uh, this one is a flat top jazz. It's going to have a jazz style bridge with a, a raised tailpiece. So it's kind of a, an acoustic jazz guitar. Um, my son leads worship at our church, and this will be his main instrument for that. So, anyways, thanks for following. Don't for forget to press the subscribe button, and we'll see you on the next video.